हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग इफ यू आर एबल टू हियर मी प्लीज टाइप यस इन द चैट बॉक्स इफ यू आर एबल टू हियर मी गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग आयशा उत्कला चंदना दीप्ति निमिषा सिप्रा वैश्य प्रसाद शुभा राम्या कृष्णा गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गाइज इफ यू आर एबल टू हेयर मी प्लीज tell me if you are able to hear me clearly and properly am i audible am i visible please type yes in the chat box if you are able to hear me clearly and if you are able to uh, see me clearly please type a yes in the chat box in english language in english language shiva kadagala has uh, typed yes in some other language i don't know whether it's tamil telugu or kannad i don't know i don't understand any of these so in english language am i audible to you am i clearly visible to you can you hear me on this amazing amazing saturday morning are we ready to uh, really sacrifice our saturday and sunday mornings to achieve our mission june 2022 are we really willing to study hard for our mission 2022 for our examination which is scheduled in june 2022 are we really ready to work hard it's telugu okay kiran says it's telugu all right okay good morning ditya good morning devraj good morning rajendra nayak yes sir let's start very good that's the spirit let's start yes we are going to start one of the very important topics of your syllabus guys most important why one of the most important i'm telling i'm telling you it's the most important topic of your syllabus it is the topic from which bare minimum 20 marks will be there in your examination both theory and practical mix okay so yes today we are going to start companies cost records and audit rules 2014 which are amended in 15 16 17 18 and 19 so the last amendment that we need to do is of 2019 so that is the topic which you are going to start today ashish sukhya says please share notes of audit it will be helpful to us yes ashish i will be sharing all these slides which i am presenting before you i will be sharing all these slides to you where would i be sharing them i will be sharing them on this whatsapp number 9643929913 please be part of the whatsapp groups which are there on this uh, number 9643929913 and in the whatsapp groups i will be sharing the pdf version of all the slides which i'll be displaying over here so that it can work as a ready reference to you a ready reckoner to you before the examination <clears throat> so one day before the examination if you want to revise the entire syllabus guys then these notes will be very very handy and very very useful to you i'll be sharing all of them good morning good morning meraki good morning adarsh chandna <clears throat> all right so let's start so guys before starting there is this particular chart in front of you and you are already aware that test test series is underway and test series will be um uh, conducted every saturday this is the schedule of the test series this schedule is also given on the communities tab of this particular channel so every sunday we have a test of cost audit or bvm spm uh, we have picked alternatively we have picked one of the chapters so today today in the evening 26th of march today in the evening the test is of companies cost records and Uh, audit rules 2014 so this is the test which is there which is scheduled for today so you need to uh, come in that whatsapp group in that whatsapp group there will be a link which is shared to you you have to join that link to attend the test okay test of entire chapter will be there entire cost um, uh, accounting rules um, uh, record rule uh, cost uh, companies cost records and audit rules 2014 will be there guys uh, please listen to this very carefully whether i am able to finish the entire chapter or not in this revision series whether i am able to finish it or not the test will be of the entire chapter okay so you have to cover the entire chapter chapter on the rules and then the test will be there in the evening both practical and theoretical part will be asked to you from this particular chapter the chapter is companies cost records and audit rules 2014 so today in the evening i'll be sharing link uh, the test will be conducted at 7 o'clock 7 p.m i'll be sharing the link in the whatsapp group and please do attend the session of this particular chapter okay sir so guys in the last class in the earlier session and yes the recording of the earlier session is already um, there in my 
प्लेलिस्ट प्लीज गो थ्रू द्ले प्ले लिस्ट वी हैव द रिकॉर्डिंग ओवर देयर सो लास्ट चैप्टर लास्ट सेशन वी हैड कवर्ड द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ कॉस्ट ऑडिट राइट एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट मदर सेक्शन द मदर सेक्शन और द गॉड सेक्शन फॉर कॉस्ट ऑडिटर्स सेक्शन वन फोर्टी एट uh we had studied this particular section also in great detail in the last class and yes guys um before i start today's class let me finish off the balance uh, remaining disqualifications of the cost auditor who cannot be a cost auditor a person um who's engaged in the company itself who's the employee of the company cannot be a cost auditor um uh, any kind of relative of the director cannot be a cost auditor any relative of that employee cannot be a cost uh, auditor any uh, partner of a uh employee cannot be a cost auditor so cost auditor definition is restricted to a very large extent so that restriction which is there on the cost auditor's appointment that is what we had discussed in our earlier session guys so who cannot be a cost auditor that is what we had discussed in our earlier session so we had covered this part relative of partner of such a firm which holds any security in the group company all right so we we were on this particular part when we had left the lecture last right relative of partner of such a firm which holds any security or interest in any group company so guys if there is a partnership firm which has some kind of uh, securities which um, uh, the partnership firm has purchased of the company then guys um, uh, the that particular partnership firm or any of the relative of the partner or any partner of that uh, partnership firm are not allowed to be cost auditor of that particular company so company here doesn't only mean the company itself but the entire group companies so entire um uh, group is restricted from audit of that particular uh, from that particular firm so that partnership firm which holds securities in the uh, uh, company that partnership firm's partners and their relatives are disqualified of becoming the cost auditor so not only that company but entire group company is disqualified uh, the auditor cannot be um, uh, there for the entire group so what do you mean by group company what is the definition of group company guys the definition of group company is given over here group company means so this is the company which we are um, uh, you know which we want to uh, be an auditor for so holding company of this company will co will be covered under group company subsidiary company of this company will be covered under the group company definition then sister concern will be covered under the group company definition then any associate what do you mean by associate associate means um you do not have any shareholding in this company but you still have significant influence of um uh, taking decisions in this particular company so you are not the shareholder of this company you are not the director of this company you are not the um uh, any sort of um uh, any key manager person of this company but still you hold a significant influence in this company then you will become a relative of or a person who's um uh, who, who is a group company so associate will become a group company so if if an auditor is disqualified for from becoming auditor of this company then for the clauses where group company is written the auditor will be disqualified from auditing any of the group companies any and every of the group companies the auditor will not be the cost auditor so if you become disqualified from becoming an auditor of the this company then you automatically becomes disqualified from being the auditor of any of the group companies that is the um uh, real um uh, provision okay so it says relative of partner of such firm which holds any securities which hold any security <clears throat> or interest in any group company which is more than 1 lakh rupees of face value so 1 lakh rupees of more more of face value then guys um uh, you are uh, disqualified from becoming the cost auditor test series only for enrolled student or for all bro code it's for all it is not restricted to only the students who are enrolled for my courses no it's absolutely free of cost for all the students of the country who want to give test series for cost audit and bvm spm a person indebted indebted to any company for more than 5 lakh rupees so a person who is indebted on the company for more than 5 lakh rupees who has taken any loan from the company for more than 5 lakh rupees or a person who has given guarantee or security on behalf of group company a person who has given guarantee or security on behalf of the group company any of the group company then um uh, guys uh, there is a disqualification so guarantee and security is eligible till 1 lakh rupees and indebtedness indebtedness is eligible up to 5 lakh rupees so you can you know be indebted indebted um, up to 5 lakh rupees but if you are indebted beyond 5 lakh rupees then you cannot do audit of that particular company 
then it says a person of firm having business relationship with the group company so if a person has any kind of business relationship with the group company what do you mean by business relationship sir guys business relationship mean, means any kind of commercial transaction that you are entering in with that company apart from being the auditor okay so you are the auditor please be the auditor why do you want to uh, you know sell goods to that company why do you want to sell employees to that company why do you want to have any commercial transaction with that company why do you want to have it if you are the auditor stay the auditor stay as the auditor don't try to um, uh, enter into any kind of commercial transactions with that particular company so any person or a firm having business relationship with a group company is disqualified from becoming the auditor he cannot be an auditor you cannot have any commercial relationships with the company but there are certain exceptions to it what are the exceptions meaning of business relationship so business relationship means any commercial transaction any commercial transaction other than other than there are two exceptions to it permissible professional services by a cost auditor so if the cost auditor is giving some permissible service some other service which is permitted permits permissible as per the act for example um the auditor is actually you know filing the return of income for you auditor is uh, 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 you know uh, filing your income tax return of income or it is doing some gst computation work for you or any kind of work which is not prohibited right any kind of permissible work which cost auditor um, uh, can do he is doing that work that is covered under exception you can do it okay you can do it that's not a problem you can do it and secondly transactions in normal course of business of the company at an arms length price the word is alp arms length price so any other transaction in the normal course of business of the company so suppose the company is into the business of um, uh, giving loans okay so i am uh, the cost auditor of hdfc bank suppose suppose obviously in the next chapter we'll be st studying whether um, hdfc bank is eligible for cost auditor or not but suppose i am the cost auditor of hdfc bank okay i am taking fees of cost audit from hdfc bank now hdfc bank is also providing loan to me as a usual customer i am customer of hdfc bank for last 20 years i am a usual regular customer of hdfc bank now if hdfc bank is providing loan to me uh, i am the cost auditor of that hdfc bank then guys that is permissible because the work of hdfc bank is in the normal course of business of hdfc bank it is uh, giving loan to any person right so if i take loan from hdfc bank that's perfectly all right even if i am the cost auditor that's not a problem or at all even if i am the cost auditor that's perfectly fine right but now i'm asking you a question and your fingers should be on the chat box your fingers should be on the keyboard answer me um uh, the the uh, answer to the next question which i'm asking now suppose suppose listen to this question very carefully guys very very carefully okay suppose the interest charged by hdfc bank in the normal course of business is 8% and the interest which is being charged from me as a cost auditor is 6% then guys this is permissible or not please write in the chat box yes or no is it permissible or not the usual interest rate which is there on the kind of loan which i am taking is 8% from the other customers but since i am the cost auditor i am the privileged one right i'll be getting an interest rate of 6% i'll be charged an interest rate of uh, 6% is it permissible or not so juhi says no sneh says no miraki says no vivek lambate says no very good sangeeta says no deepthi says no be focus says no utkala says no vasanta gomathi ashish shipra nimisha shweta matthew gitika brocode sarvesh mrunal prasad shivani isha tiwari vinita agrawal gorav perfect answer from all of you perfect answer i think you are all geared up to become cma in june 2022 examination i am very very sure that in after june 2022 examination i will see all these names with a suffix of cma i'm very very sure about it yes guys so please note the important words and if you have copied this particular chart in your register please underline these words in the normal course of business in the normal course of business which means normally the way business is done you have to do the business in that normal way with the cost auditor also if you do something abnormally we will 
reprimand you. We will catch hold of you if you do anything abnormally. It should be done in the normal course of business. Now, my next question is, please listen to the question carefully and write your answer in the chat box. Arm's length price, 2% arm length price. No, no, Matthew. That arm's length price, 2%, 3%, 5% is direct taxation and international taxation percentage, not um, uh, in cost audit, okay? Okay. Now, my next question to you is, next question, please listen to the next question very, very carefully. Usually, usually, the credit which is given, the credit which is given usually to the kind of Sybil score which I have, suppose I have a Sybil score of say 820 points. I have a Sybil score of 820 points. So according to that Sybil score, I am eligible for loan of 20 lakh rupees. But since I am the cost auditor, the SDFC bank gives me loan of 40 lakh rupees. But the interest charge is the normal interest rate, which is 8%. Okay. The interest charge is the normal interest rate, which is 8%. That is not uh, uh, discounted for my sake. But yes, I was eligible for 20 lakhs of loan. I have been given 40 lakhs of loan. Tell me, permissible or not? Yes or no? In the chat box. Let's see who gets it. Shweta says not permissible. Aisha says not permissible. Gita Mathur, not permissible. Ashi Sukhya, not permissible. Deepti, Sangeeta, Matthew, Juhi, Vasanta, Ditya, Vivek, Be Focus, Karan, Shipra, Gomathi, Avneet, Ashish, Miraki, Sumant, Prasad. Brilliant answer. All of you, brilliant answer. Not permissible. Guys, again, not permissible because your terms and conditions cannot differ from the normal course of business of the company. So yes, these were the two exceptions where business relationship can happen. Apart from these two cases, there cannot be any business relationship which can happen be between the company and the cost order. And guys, despite of these two exceptions, please note that it is always a healthy practice to not to have any commercial transaction with your auditee. Why to have a commercial transaction with your auditee? Even if you are auditing uh, HDFC Bank, why can't you take loan from Kotak Mahindra Bank or ICICI Bank or South Indian Bank? For that matter, why do you have to take um, a loan only and only from HDFC Bank? Don't take it from an ethical perspective. You should not enter into any transaction, but the law is giving you a leeway. It is giving you some permission to enter into some business relationships. Okay, sir. Got it. Then, guys, any relative of the director or key managerial personnel of the company is, um, uh, again, disqualified from becoming the auditor of the company, any relative of director or key managerial personnel of the company. KMP means key managerial personnel. A person who's in full-time employment elsewhere, if you're doing any job elsewhere, if you're doing, doing any um, a job elsewhere, you are not permitted to be cost auditor of uh, the company, of any company, because if you're into part-time uh, job, then you're not eligible for be becoming the cost auditor. A person who already holds audit of 20 companies, this is the restriction, which is given the upper limit, which is given 144, 144. Um, uh, 3G, uh, the limit which is given is 20 companies, you can at most be order of 20 companies, you can ask at most be cost order of 20 companies. Guys, to give fair opportunities to all the cost accountants, to give fair work, distribution of work should be fair for all the cost accountants, the uh, government has fixed up a limit. The limit is um, 20 companies. A particular auditor can only audit 20 companies and not more than 20 companies. But yes, in counting this 20 companies, there are certain exceptions which are not to be counted. So 1% company, you can have unlimited 1% companies uh, for which you can do the cost audit. Dormant companies, you can have unlimited dormant companies for which you can have cost audit. Small companies, there's no restriction of 20 companies in case of small companies. Then private companies whose paid up share capital is less than 100 crores, you can do a uh, cost audit of such companies. Unlimited uh, cost audit can be done. Even more than 20 companies can be eligible for cost audit. So these are the four exceptions of uh, this particular rule then a person held guilty of fraud so yes if you are um, a cost writer and you are held guilty of some fraud then guys for 10 years you cannot accept cost audit of any company for 10 years you cannot accept cost writer audit for any company if you are a cost writer and you have been held guilty for any fraud then for the 10 years you are debarred from doing cost audit of any company okay 10 years is the timeline then provider of specialized services if you are providing certain specialized services to your client, to the company, then you are not eligible to do cost out of that company. What are the specialized services? Specialized services are accounting, bookkeeping, internal audit, 
design implementation of financial information systems actuarial services investment advisory investment banking management services if you are providing any of these services to your client you cannot be a cost shorter of the same client that is the restriction all right guys and the last two topics of this particular chapter topics are objectives of cost audit audit what are the objectives of cost audit and what are the advantages of cost audit guys i am not going to deep down into these two topics please do them yourself because these are very very simple they are very very easy but yes from an exam standpoint they are important also but they are very very easy i need not explain any part of this these two topics because they are very simple okay now i am quickly moving on to today's class because this was yeah, uh, the last times class which is going on now i'm going to um I'll start with today's class and the today's class is yes one of the most important topics of your syllabus which is the company's cost records and audit rules 2014 amended till 2019 guys lifeline of cost accountants lifeline of cost accountants are these rules these rules are the lifeline of cost accountants these rules are the um basis of profession of cost accountancy and yes i can see a lot of likes on this particular video guys uh, do like this video please hit a like button if you really like this video so that i am also motivated to give you ample um, live sessions like this and i promise although i am not committing but i promise that i will try my level best to have paper number 20 live sessions also just like this paper number 20 live sessions i will have just like this so i can um uh, you know i uh, can can uh, actually vouch for it i can i will try my level best to have the live sessions okay sir got it so company's cost records and audit rules 2014 this is what we are going to now start the most important topic of your syllabus companies um uh, cost records and audit rules 2014 and yes many of you have given me a hit like beautiful guys thank you so much the like count has increased to 42 now brilliant thank you so much for liking this video yes so companies cost records and audit rules 2014 guys lifeline for the cma students why do i say there is a lifeline because guys let me take you back to the let me take you back to the section section 148 okay let me take you back to that particular section that section emanates from companies act 2013 let me take you back to that particular section section is section 148 section is section 148 it okay yes this is the mother section okay this is the god section i think we should pray in the early morning when we wake up we should pray we should actually uh, offer some flowers to this section we should have some kumkum um uh, tilak uh, of this particular section because this is the mother section or the god section for cmas guys this section refers to certain rules please look at this as specified in the rules as specified in the criteria and the rules this section tells about certain rules this section mentions about certain rules so there are certain criteria which are given in these rules so it 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 talks about the rules what are these rules guys these rules are companies cost records and audit rules 2014 sir tell us one thing why such a hectic um uh, uh, you know uh, scheme of uh, law sir why couldn't have those rules which are given in rules 2014 why couldn't we imbibe those rules over here only in section 148 itself sir so why do we need separate rules why do we study separate rules sir why can't we imbibe those rules in this section only sir why do we have to study uh, rules separately the companies act should have imbibed those rules in section 148 itself no why are we studying a different legislature altogether it is so much of um, a pain it is so much hectic to study the rules separately sir why couldn't have we combined the section and the rules any thoughts um, please give in the chat box any thoughts why the rules are not given in the act itself why the rules are not given in the act itself why the section uh, doesn't only specify whatever it has to specify in rules why is it not there in section it should be in section itself no so why separate rules please give your thoughts on the chat box i am requiring your thoughts in the chat box please give your thoughts in the chat box why separate rules are required why separate rules are required please give your thoughts in the chat box why can't we have why can't we have section only extended and why can't we have these rules in the section itself okay why do we need separate rules 
it is such a hev havoc it is such a um uh, uh, you know difficult situation rules separately study section separately study we'll be all confused it is so much of problem why 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 any reasons prasad says section will be so lengthy brilliant vaishya prasad prasad vaishya brilliant brilliant answer sections would be so lengthy brilliant this rules are amended in 2014 ashish ashish sukhia brilliant answer ashish very good rules are amended again and again if you want to amend rules it is a easier task if you want to amend section it is a difficult task we amend this uh, rules again and again it will be very difficult uh, you know to uh, amend the section okay every time we want to amend the rule so it's easier to amend the rules so the two prime reasons why uh, rules are separate is that um uh, you know we cannot have a lengthy section section will be very very lengthy if we have rules in the section itself um then the section will be very very lengthy secondly the rules are amended a lot and it is easier to amend rules rather than the section rather than the act these are the two reasons why rules are separate section is separate and rules are known as subordinate legislature subordinate legislature means where the main legislature which is the income tax or uh, sorry the companies act 2013 Uh, the companies act 2013 is giving powers to uh, uh, have some procedural aspects in the rules this is known as subordinate legislature as you can see on the screen it's known as subordinate legislature brilliant answer guys you already are champions you all are champions let me tell you you all are champions wow i get more answers i am so excited matthew joseph says rule cannot be amended whenever required gitika mathur says rules come in uh, 2014 and for more explanation of the act very good gitika mathur ditya shiroy sales rules are amendment time to time perfect perfect all the answers are absolutely correct let me start let me start let me start the most important rules of a career of a cost accountant this is the bread and butter of cost accountants cmas let me start with pride and privilege the rules 2014 companies cost records and audit rules 2014 and before starting these rules let me tell you these rules are a monopoly of cost accountants these rules are only and only monopoly of cost accountants which means that the audit which is prescribed under these rules are only and only conducted by cost accountants so this is our monopoly this is our field this is our area of work all right sir so i am going to discuss six rules with you as of now six uh, rules i am going to uh, discuss with you as of now 1 2 3 4 5 6 those are six rules rule number 1 is title so guys any section any um, law which is there in the country the first rule or the first section is always the title what is the name of that particular uh, rule and where is it applicable so rule 1 is the title rule rule 2 is an important rule which is the definitions in our case uh, it has got many definitions i have picked up only important definitions okay which are important from an exam standpoint it has more definitions okay whatever i am doing in these revision lectures please don't think that they are complete okay please don't think that i'm doing absolutely 100% of the syllabus according to my knowledge according to my wisdom i am cherry picking certain important topics and doing these revisions guys please don't think that i'm covering the entire 100% syllabus in these revisions similarly i have not covered all the definitions i have only covered four most important definitions which are there in rule 2 they are cost accountant in practice cost accountant in practice so guys your hands on the keyboard and then in the last class i had asked you this question and you has you have answered me this question in the last class i want the answer again from all of you your hands on the keyboard cost accountant in practice to become a cost accountant in practice apart from clearing cma final and getting membership from the institute what else do i require please write in the chat box apart from clearing cma final and getting my membership number what else should i require to become a cost accountant in practice please write in the chat box oh wow sneh sharma utkala deepti gaurav vinita agrawal joshika shweta tiwari shipra vivek aisha bro code mohit sharma matthew nimisha gupta ditya shinoy brilliant guys brilliant i couldn't have asked for um uh, better crowd better audience better students apart from you you are the best students that i have seen in my life cost of uh, certificate of practice is required apart from becoming member of the institute apart from clearing the examination and getting membership 
ID. I need COP certificate of practices required. Perfect. Next cost auditor. So guys, once you become a cost accountant in practice, then you need an appointment from the company. When a company appoints you as the cost auditor, then you become the cost auditor. So cost auditor means cost accountant in practice plus appointment by board of directors of the company. So cost auditor means cost accountant in practice plus appointment by board of directors of the company. What is a cost audit report? Guys, cost audit report is the final product which um, any cost auditor would sign at the end of the cost audit. That is the cost audit report. There is a specific format which is given in form CRA3. Form CRA3. There's a specific format which is given in this particular form. And yes, the audit report is to be prepared in that format only. Please don't have your own format for preparing cost audit report. No, they are that is to be prepared in form CRA3. Then what do you mean by cost records? Cost records, guys, um, means three things. Uh, utilization of material, utilization of labor, and other item of cost. Any kind of um, records which can demonstrate or which can uh, find the value of um, uh, the uh, uh, value of material, value of labor, and other item of cost, that is known as cost records. So no specific format is given in the act or in the rules for preparing cost records, but the ultimate aim is given. Ultimate aim is to find out the utilization of material, find out the utilization of labor, and find out the utilization of other items of cost that is cost records and you need to prepare cost records as per form CRA1. There are two more forms. Form CRA2. Guys, CRA2 is for appointment of the cost order. When the cost order is appointed under rule 6, then CRA2 is to be filed. That is CRA2. And what is CRA4? CRA4 is when the cost audit report which is prepared under CRA3 is submitted to central government. It is submitted under form CRA4. So these are the four forms which you need to remember. So do we need to remember the numbers? Yes, we need to remember the numbers. CRA1, cost records. CRA2, uh, appointment of cost auditor. CRA3, cost audit report. CRA4, submission of cost audit report to the central government. These are the four forms that are important for us. Then we come to rule three. And yes, now we start the operative part of the rules. These were the procedural parts of the rules. These were the so to say theoretical parts of the rules. Now we see the operative part of the rule. Now we see actually the part where um, uh, the rules will start functioning in. They will start kicking in. The first part is application of cost records. Who all companies are required to prepare their cost records? Application of cost records. Because I've told you in the last lecture, guys, it is not all the companies who are uh, required to prepare their cost records. No, all the companies are not required to prepare their cost records. Only specified companies are required to prepare their cost records. Only the specified companies, not all the companies. So rule three is on application of cost records. How will the cost records apply? So there are monetary thresholds which you are going to study in a short while. Rule four is on application of cost audit, which all companies are required to get their cost audit done. So yes, guys. Needless to say, if you want to get your cost right done, then the first requirement is that you should be eligible to prepare your cost records. Because if you are not required to prepare your cost records, then how can you get yourself cost audited? Because what is the auditor going to check? It is cost records only. So my question to you is, my question to you is, and you have to answer in the chat box, yes or no. Only one word answer, okay, yes or no. Reliance Industries Limited, suppose, is not required to prepare its cost records. Reliance Industries Limited, suppose, is not required to prepare its cost records. Is it possible whether it uh, is, is, is it possible that it is required to get its cost audit done? Is it possible that it is required to get its cost audit done? So, but we have not studied the monetary th threshold. How can we answer your question? No, guys, without studying the monetary threshold, you answer my question. Reliance Industries Limited is, Limited is not required to prepare its cost records. Is it possible that rules will say, get your cost audit done? Yes or no? Yes or no? Matthew says yes. Matthew, you are wrong. How, how are you saying yes? Sneh, Aisha, Vineet, Shweta, Avneet, Vineet, Jyotika, Joshika, Sumant, Ditya, Brokord, Shriji, Shrija, Srimati, Kiran, Kiran Rathod. Deepti, Shivali, Lavanya, Krishna. Perfect, perfect. Very good answer. Very good answer. Answer is no. If rule 3 is not applicable on a company, automatically, automatically, don't even see the monetary threshold. I'm not going to monetary threshold. If rule 3 is not applicable on a company, automatically, automatically, let me repeat, automatically, rule 4 will also not be applicable. 
it is an automatic action if rule 3 is not applicable rule 4 will also not be applicable it's automatic don't see the monetary threshold no need of seeing the monetary threshold because if cost records are not required to be prepared then what will be audited you will not be able to audit anything what will be audited what will you audit if records are not prepared so the first condition of cost audit is that you should be eligible to prepare your cost records under rule 3 that is mandatory otherwise cost audit will not be eligible to you if you fulfill this condition then comes the question what is your monetary threshold then we will analyze the monetary threshold and then we will say whether cost audit is to be done or not perfect next maintenance of cost records how will we maintain the cost records what are the manner of preparation of cost records that will be told to us by rule 5 then rule 6 is cost audit how the cost auditor will be appointed what is the procedure of appointment of cost auditor that is rule 6 and i've already discussed form cra2 with all of you where the cost auditor will be um, appointed will be recruited that i've already discussed with you so now guys out of all these rules out of all these rules most important two rules are rule four and five please mark in your register please mark in your book please mark in your uh, uh, diary rule three rule five rule three rule four most important in examination all the questions will be surrounding these two rules rule three rule four most important two rules of your syllabus rule three rule four okay sir all right so now we move on to the giant rule three the giant rule three cmm mohit sharma says sir i have lots of question in conducting cost audit what sir we are facing in conducting audit absolutely cmm mohit sharma it's it's uh, uh, it's really um, uh, good to see qualified cma is also joining uh, this session very good cmm mohit sharma you can uh, whatsapp me on the number number i am writing on the board once again for your ready reference 9643 Nine two nine nine one three. You can WhatsApp me. Uh, I'll be there on this number after nine p.m. Nine to eleven p.m. I'm daily uh, available on this number. I will take your call. I will take your WhatsApp from nine p.m. to eleven p.m. Apart from Sunday, Sunday I'm not available. Apart from Sunday, weekdays you can call me on this number, and I will be happy to connect. All right. Now we move on to rule three, which is the most important, the most um, uh, basic platform for every CMA. For cost accountants, this is the foundation of their profession. This is the foundation of their career, CRA3. Where we are going to talk only and only about cost records. Guys, we are not going to talk about cost audit in this section, whether cost audit is applicable or not, whether audit is required or not. I'm not going to discuss it. I'm only going to discuss one thing, whether cost records are eligible to be made or not. Whether cost records are separately required to be made or not. Because guys, financial records, everyone has to make. Financial records, everyone has to make. But separate cost records, only few companies are required to make. Okay, sir, voluntarily, if you want, you know, if some company is not eligible to prepare cost records according to this rule, but voluntarily, okay, a suomoto, out of his own will, it wants to prepare cost records. No harm, no harm, no restriction as per law. It's in fact good for you if you are. Um, uh, preparing the cost records without any requirement of doing so please go ahead please prepare cost records no problem at all no problem at all so if you want to prepare cost records without any um, uh, compelling reason or without any force you can do it voluntarily that's okay but in this particular rule we are going to see what are the mandatory provisions of law uh, which companies are mandatory required to get their cost records prepared that is what we are going to see over here so guys three conditions met First, plus second, plus third, you are required to prepare your cost records. Let me repeat. Three conditions met. Condition one plus condition two plus condition three is equal to cost records to be prepared by the company. I hope the board is entirely visible to you. Yes, the board is entirely visible to you. First condition plus second condition plus third condition is equal to cost records required to be prepared. Now, guys, the, the conjunction which is used is plus, which is synonym to and. So, please write in the comment box, please write in the chat box whether all the three conditions are to be cumulatively satisfied or even if, or even if one of them is satisfied, that is also fine. So, what, um, what is my question? Please hear to my question. Are all the three conditions required to be cumulatively satisfied? 
are all the three condition required to be cumulatively satisfied or if any condition is satisfied then also it is good for us then also it is fine for us all conditions are cumulatively required to be satisfied or even if one condition is satisfied that's fine for us please write in the chat box and those students who have just now joined the um, uh, chat room joined the uh, live session please hit the like button okay please hit the like button all right all the conditions should be cumulatively satisfied utkala vivek sneh nikhil shipra krishna brocord matthew joshika avneet shrija gomathi shweta tiwari perfect perfect very good answer perfect very good answer now let us come on to the conditions guys condition number 1 any company any company including a foreign company any company including a foreign company so the first condition is that these particular rules are applicable to any kind of company any kind of company all kind of companies are included in these rules whether it is private company whether it is public company whether it is a one person company whether it is small company whether it's big company these rules are equally applicable to all the companies even the foreign companies sir foreign companies how can foreign company work in india foreign company is a company which is registered in united states of america or australia how can a foreign company work in india please write in the chat box if you are aware that how can a foreign company work in india indian company can work in india but how can a foreign company work in india how is that possible any thoughts please give in the chat box i don't understand how can a foreign company work in india how can a foreign company work in india through what mode how will it work it is a foreign company which is located in united states of america how can it work in india any thoughts so shweta says through subsidiary if subsidiary is made then the subsidiary is the indian company then we will have um, uh, it as indian company it is no more a foreign company then a subsidiary of a foreign company is in effect an indian company because it is registered in indian companies act 2013 it will become an indian company so oh wow bro code yo bro yo bro bro code i don't know real name of bro code bro code please give your real name because he is the first person to write the correct answer bro code yo bro please give your name bro code bro code please give your name ha huh? what is your name i want to know bro code's name bro code is absolutely right bro code says it's through a branch a foreign company can have an indian branch company it's a branch of foreign company in india it's an extension of foreign company in india if it um, uh, uh, creates a branch in india uh, heramb 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 okay bro code name is heramb brilliant <laughs> great <laughs> okay so foreign company having um, uh, place of business in india yes vinita agarwal you are right place of business is usually in form of branch office okay branch perfect branch is the correct answer so foreign company can have a branch in india if foreign company has a branch in india and other conditions are met then that is also eligible for cost records second engaged in production of specified goods or services oh the activity which the company should do for getting classified under cost records category the activity which company should do the activity is engaged in production production synonymous is manufacture of specified goods your hands on the keyboard i am a dealer of i am a dealer of certain goods okay i am a dealer of the goods which are specified goods okay what i do is i purchase that good for 100 rupees add my commission 20 rupees sell it as it is to a third party i purchase that good add my commission to it without doing any modification sell it to the third party please tell me if i am dealing with specified goods whether uh, cost records will be applicable on me or not and if not what is the reason i am uh, expecting an answer in the chat box let's see who solves this mystery first okay is he eligible for cost record reason i want the reason also no 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 is not enough no is not enough i know i need the reason also i need the reason wow bro code yo bro bro code yo bro bro is absolutely right b focus is also right b focus gitika is also right very good gitika sneha sharma is also right shrija is also right lavanya is right shipra is right joshika is right aisha is right perfect guys 
so the prime condition of falling under this category is that you should produce or manufacture something what do you mean by manufacture produce manufacture produce means you need to convert the utility of that particular thing into something else so you should manufacture something you should produce something only doing trading activity only doing trading activity is not sufficient only doing trading activity is not sufficient so you need to produce something a specified good or you have to provide services only then only then will you be eligible for um, uh, uh, this particular uh, uh, section okay sir third criteria is meet the threshold limit of turnover you need to meet the threshold limit of turnover turnover should be above a minimum limit yes the cost audit uh, the cost record rules are not applicable to small companies very meager companies very small small companies cost records are not applicable cost records are only applicable to um, uh, high net worth companies high turnover companies we don't want to burden small small companies having very small turnover with the uh, difficult proposition of cost records so cost records is only applicable where turnover limit is met now what is the turnover limit turnover limit means overall turnover of the company overall turnover of the company should be greater than or equal to 35 crore rupees of the immediately preceding year overall turnover of the company should be greater than or equal to 35 crores in the immediately preceding year in the immediately preceding year the overall turnover of the company should be greater than or equal to 35 crores that is the monetary threshold that is the monetary threshold okay sir so i'm going to write certain numbers over here okay x limited it has a turnover of rupees 34 crores in financial year 2122 y limited has a turnover of rupees 36 crore in financial year <coughs> 2122 i have written two uh, numbers on the board guys uh, i hope you are able to see them clearly okay i have written two numbers on the board i have written two numbers on the board x limited total turnover of the year 34 crores for financial year 2122 okay Y limited total turnover of the company. We are talking about all the products, okay? Not the specified products only. All the products which are there. We are talking about all the products. All the products of the company um, uh, are having a turnover of 36 crores. Please tell me in the chat box for which company cost records are eligible. Please tell me in the chat box for which company cost records are applicable. X or Y. Just write one word. X or Y, okay? X or Y. No, no, I'm not talking about cost audit. Gitika, Gitika, where are you, Gitika? I'm not talking about cost audit. As of now, I have not touched cost audit. I've not even touched cost audit. I've only touched cost records. Please don't confuse yourself. I'm not talking about cost audit. I'm only talking about cost record. Whether you have to prepare cost record or not. Okay, okay. Please tell me which company is required to get its cost records made. X or Y? Perfect, guys. Perfect. The correct answer is. Why is required to get its cost records prepared? Why is required to get its cost records prepared? Question number two. Perfect, Krishna, Arya, Sansare, Somya, Gomti, Deepti. Perfect answer. Perfect answer, all of you. Perfect answer. Question number two. Question number two. For which financial year should Y Limited prepare its cost records? For which financial year should Why limited? Prepare its cost records. Which financial year should Why limited prepare its cost records? Which financial year should Why limited prepare its cost records? Please tell me the financial year. Wow, wow, Shiv Kumar, how twenty twenty one? Shiv Kumar, the financial year is twenty one twenty two. Wow, I am overwhelmed. I am overwhelmed. Wow, <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant answer. Zabardast, mazedar, kya baat, kya baat, kya baat. Mazedar, zabardast, khatar naak. Mayank Pawar is wrong. Mayank Pawar, you are wrong. Ditya is right. Shipra is right. Be focus is right. Krishna Sne, Gitika, Prasad, Ankita. Very good. All of you are right. We are required to prepare our cost records for financial year. 
2022-23. We need to prepare the cost records for financial year 2022-23. Sir, how? How are we required to prepare cost records for 22-23? Because the turnover is given for the preceding year. When in the preceding financial year, the turnover is above this prescribed limit, then the um, uh, audit is, uh, cost records are required to be prepared for the immediately succeeding year. So if the limit is uh, being crossed for financial year 21-22, then we will prepare the cost records for 22-23. 22-23, we will prepare the cost records. So the limit is always given of the preceding financial year. The limit is always seen for the preceding financial year. The limit is seen for the preceding financial year. Now, guys, I am giving you additional information, okay? I am giving you additional information. Please see the additional information, okay? The turnover of 36 crores of Y Limited, okay? Out of this, out of this, rupees 10 crores is trading turnover. Will your answer change? or not yes or no i want in the comment section yes or no i want in the comment section whether your answer will change or not uh, please see i have changed one rule uh, one fact fact is that out of 36 crores 10 crores is trading turnover 26 crores is manufacturing turnover or producing turnover 10 crores is trading turnover 26 crores is manufacturing turnover whether your answer will change or not Nikhil says it will change. Shipraj says it will change. Shrija Turupa says it will change. Brocode says no, no, yo bro. Gitika says no, Utkala says no, Shweta says no. Utkala says yes, okay. Renuka says no. Mayank Pawar says yes, okay. Okay, guys, brilliant answer from most of you. Answer will not change. Answer will not change. Because guys, for seeing whether cost records are applicable or not, overall turnover of the company is always to be seen. Overall turnover of the company is to be seen. It includes the trading turnover. It includes any scrap sale if it is there. It includes any kind of turnover which is there. All the turnover total will be seen over here. All the turnover will be seen over here. So, it is. it says overall turnover of the company should be greater than or equal to 35 crore rupees only then cost records will be applicable. So even if the turnover is pertaining to trading activities, then also your answer will not change. Answer is no, your answer will not change because the overall turnover of the company is to be seen, which is more than 35 crore rupees. So yes, the eligibility criteria is not for the specified products or not for production of specified products. No, it says overall turnover should be more than 35 crores, right? So I hope you understood this. Nikhil says, oh, okay, sir. Yes, Nikhil. Yes, rule three is not applicable. Suman Gupta. Okay. Yes, because of trading, not for product production. All right. All right. So overall turnover is required to be seen. Perfect. Is equal to cost records required to be prepared for the specified products or services only. So the cost records are required to be prepared for the specified products only. The products which are specified in this particular table, um, which is their specified table A and B. So please let us know what are these specified products. Okay, guys, let me take you to what are the specified products. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So these are the specified products which we are talking about. Okay, guys, this is extract of um, uh, my cost audit book, which I have prepared as per the syllabus, which is prescribed by, as per the ICMAI. Um, even if you're doing self-study, I would highly recommend you can go for this book because in this book, I have not only incorporated um, the provisions of the law, but I've also incorporated certain unique features about certain historical facts about the rules where had they emanated from. What were the orders which were earlier given for cost um, uh, records and audit? What is the history of cost records? So I have uh, written this book in a reasonable detailed manner. So you can go for this book. This book is available on Amazon or, or it is also available on cscscmnikhilgupta.com, my website. All right. So you can go for this book. Of course, Institute Study Mat is definitely one of the best sources. <clears throat> it is just that I have incorporated certain additional part apart from <coughs> Institute Mat. <clears throat> All right. So what are the goods? So guys, the goods are given over here. Goods are categorized under two tables. Well, A, which is regulated sector. Six industries are there. Telecommunication, generation, transmission of electricity, petroleum, drugs, fertilizer, sugar. So these are the six regulated sectors, the six regulatory services, the six regulated um, uh, areas where the cost records are applicable. 
so this is table a this is category a table a now i move to table b which has got 33 industries okay <clears throat> 33 industries are included which are unregulated sector unregulated means this sector is um uh, uh, is not controlled by any ministry is not controlled by any um uh, uh, any of the uh, controlling authority and these are um, uh, unregulated sector 33 industries are there prasad beshya says sir why limited shall have to prepare cost audit records for year 21 22 also no prasad no prasad we don't know whether he has to prepare for 21 22 or not because for seeing whether he has to prepare for 21 22 or not we need the turnover limits for 2021 question did not give us the turnover limit for 2021 so we don't know whether 21 22 records are required to be prepared or not prasad all right so these are the 33 industries which are there like machinery turbo jets arms ammunition propellant radar tank port services aeronautical services iron steel etc so these are the 33 industries for which cost records are required to be prepared so you know the prime uh, things which you should remember is um, uh, coffee tea rubber allied products mineral fuel cement cement is one of the most important um, uh, uh, you know uh, products jute and jute products edible oil construction industry all these uh, you know you just read them thrice and you will be able to understand them well all right so guys in this particular book i have also mentioned about certain uh, opinions of technical cell uh, technical cell is the uh, uh, research wing of the institute of cost accountants of india which tells um, uh, whether you know some opinions on uh, certain issues so technical cell uh, opinions also have been incorporated in this book particular book all right health services milk powder pesticides okay all these goods are there uh, in uh the 33 products these are the 33 products okay sir so yes we have seen an overview of 33 products of course you have to read 33 products yourself and read them thrice okay read them thrice so that in the before the examination you are able to recall them if there's a question so we were at these three uh, pillars of uh, uh, rule 3 if these three these three things are satisfied then cost records are required to be prepared for the specified goods or services okay there's one notorious section which is attached to these rules guys it says once the rules are applicable on any financial year they will apply forever even if the turnover reduces the beneath below uh, reduces below the threshold so once these rules are applicable in any of the year then going forward till eternity till the company is diluted till the company is dissolved these rules will forever be applicable so tell me guys good for our profession or bad for our profession is it growth oriented or it is is it not growth oriented good for our profession or bad for our profession please write good or bad in the chat box once cost records will be applicable in one of the years then all the subsequent years cost records will be applicable forever forever till the dissolution of the company cost records will be applicable even if the turnover is below 35 crores in the subsequent year good for our profession <laughs> <laughs> lavanya says very good gitika says good suman gupta says yes good 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 very good <laughs> i knew this was your answer i knew this was coming i know i knew you this was coming this is this is nothing but greed which is there in your eyes so just uh, look at your eyes in the mirror this is this is greed which is there in your eyes you're so happy ha huh? so means after 2023 it will go on and on and on sir good for us aisha devam agrawal very good answer very good total growth growth oriented totally growth shipra says totally growth oriented please see the greed which is there in your eyes you are so greedy you know at this point in time very good sir very good section ha huh? very very good you love this section now you will remember this section forever in your life right yes sir okay so guys let's do one example let's do one example and let's see whether we are able to understand this rule well or not because this is by far one of the most important rules of our syllabus and a practical question as well as a theory question can come from this rule for sure and yes um uh, in today's class we'll be discussing up till rule 3 only rule 4 will be starting in our subsequent class before um, uh, we come on to this question guys those of you who have just joined in and who have not pressed the like button please hit the like button um uh, soon bro code says banks include hai kya sir wo 33 mein nahi bro code banks included nahi hai wo 33 mein All right. All right. Details for financial year twenty one twenty two. So certain details are given to you for financial year twenty one twenty two. Details of turnover are given to you. You need to answer two questions. Okay. Applicability of rule three, which means applicability of cost records. In which year will it be applicable? And for which products will it be applicable? Okay. That is what you need to uh, answer. Okay. I'll exp expand this question for all of you so that you are able to see it clearly. Okay. 
Okay, so this is the question for all of you. This is the question. I hope you are able to see it properly. Okay, so this company manufactures two things: cement and laptops. This company manufactures two things: cement and laptop. First of all, let us see whether cement is covered under these categories or not. Whether cement is covered under this category or not, because the first condition is that it should be mentioned over here. Oh yes, cement is covered and under. Um, uh, point number fourteen of the rules. Cement is covered under point number fourteen of the rules. All right. So cement is covered. Okay. Cement is covered. Now the qu uh, next question is whether laptop is covered or not. Whether laptop is covered or not. So guys, uh, scroll to through this entire uh, and this entire list and answer is no. No, laptops are not covered. Laptops are not covered over here. Okay. So guys, crux of the matter is crux of the matter is the the mood point of consideration which I wanted to um, uh, bring out over here is cement. Cement is table A product, and laptop is neither table A. nor table b neither table a nor table b okay so you have two products first is um, a table a product which is cement so the manufacturing turnover the turnover which you attain through manufacturing is 20 lakh rupees laptop is 15 crore rupees it is 20 lakh rupees laptop is 14 um, uh, 20, 15 crore rupees trading trading turnover is 40 lakh rupees 20 crore rupees okay Sale of scrap is three lakh rupees in case of cement. Laptop is fifty lakh rupees. You need to tell me whether uh, uh, rule three cost records a turnover is met or not. That is what you need to tell me. Okay, I am bringing my calculator. I have to find my calculator where I have kept my calculator, and I am not able to find my calculator. Where is okay? I am able to find my calculator. Your calculator should be in your hands because we need to total all these um, uh, numbers. Okay. So fifteen crores plus twenty crores plus so the total turnover of the company is actually thirty six point one three crore okay this is the total turnover of the company so I'm writing this uh, at the bottom okay. i'm writing this at the bottom okay i want to know what is the total turnover of manufacturing okay the total turnover of manufacturing is 15.20 crore total manufacturing activity total of manufacturing activity 15.20 crore total of trading activity 20.40 crore total of scrap sale 53 lakhs total of scrap sale 53 lakhs and total entire uh, total turnover of the company is 36.13 lakhs total turnover of the company is 36.13 lakhs so this is the bifurcation of the turnover now my question to you is whether cost records will be applicable or not or whether rule 3 will be applicable or not first question is whether rule 3 will be applicable or not that is the question which we need to answer okay please note that manufacturing turnover is 15.20 crore please note that manufacturing turnover is only 15.20 crore you need to tell me whether rule 3 will be applicable or not okay let us see the conditions guys let us see the conditions okay now it says it says any company so is it a company in our case yes it is a company in our case whether it is engaged in production of specified goods and services yes it is engaged in production of specified goods and services what is the turnover criteria turnover criteria is overall turnover of the company is 35 crores or more so now your uh, your um, uh, uh, question is that whether the total turnover of the company including trading manufacturing scrap sale everything whether that total turnover is 35 crores or more answer is yes so now my question is whether cost records is applicable answer is rule 3 is applicable rule 3 is applicable this is my answer number 1 rule 3 is applicable 
Scrap sale, yes, buying power. Even if scrap sale is there, that is included in total turnover computation. Scrap means your scrap has been sold. That is revenue for you. That will be included. Okay, cost records is applicable. Now my question number two. Please write in the chat box. Please write in the keyboard. Write on the chat box whether for which financial year will this cost records be applicable. My question number two. My answer number two is for which financial year will this cost records be applicable. My answer number two. Please give me answer. मेरे सवालों का जवाब दो दो ना प्लीज गिव मी आंसर फॉर विच फाइनेंशियल ईयर विल दिस कॉस्ट रिकॉर्ड्स बी एप्लीकेबल फॉर विच फाइनेंशियल ईयर प्लीज नोट दैट द डिटेल्स विच आर गिवन टू मी आर फॉर फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू दट प्लीज नोट दैट द डिटेल्स विच आर गिवन टू मी आर फॉर फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू विच फाइनेंशियल ईयर विल आई uh uh do the cost records for wow i think i think i should discontinue these classes because not even a single student is giving a wrong answer not even a single student is giving a wrong answer brilliant brilliant superb very good i think you are very well prepared for cost audit guys very good not even a single student has given the wrong answer so the financial year for which the records are required to be prepared is financial year 2022 23 financial year 2022 23 now uh, one question which has cropped up in my mind it is not there over here but you guys answer me in the chat box okay suppose in financial year 2022 23 the total turnover of the company reduces to only 15 crores there are huge losses in the company and the total turnover of the company reduces to 15 crores which is less than 35 crores from all the sources of revenue the revenue is less than 35 crores suppose in financial year 2023 the turnover is less then please tell me whether cost record will be applicable for financial year 23 24 or not whether cost record will be applicable for whether um uh, 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 cost record will be applicable for financial year 23 24 or not answer is yes once it is applicable it will be applicable forever perfect guys perfect perfect answer perfect all right third question third question third question which products for which products will the cost records be applicable my third question and my last question and i'll be ending this session now okay i will be ending this session now after you give me answer to my third question third question is for which product should the should the cost records be prepared i can give you three options okay i can give you three options i'm talking about product okay three options number 1 cement number 2 laptop number 3 both cement and laptop number 1 cement number 2 laptop number 3 both cement and laptop number 1 cement number 2 laptop or number 3 both cement and laptop which for which product will the cost records be required to be prepared guys you are right yet again the cost records will be made only and only for cement the cost records will be made only and only for cement and for no other uh, product perfect perfect because why 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 because because it says look at this particular stanza which says cost records are required to be prepared for specified products only cost records are required to be prepared for specified products only it is not required to be prepared for any other product it is only required to be prepared for the specified products so laptop is not required to um, uh, you know you, you need not prepare cost records for laptop but you have to prepare cost records for cement because it is the specified good which is there in table b okay i'm so sorry guys i have written table a over here this is incorrect <laughs> cement is not table a it is table b table b is cement cement is table b not table a okay all right so yes you have answered the three questions and this uh, uh, this uh, exercise was a difficult one guys and kudos to you congratulations to you that you have 
actually um, uh, you know uh, uh, done this particular question this is a difficult question this is not an easy question so you have been able to answer all the three parts well so this is an indicator of the fact that you are preparing well and you are definitely going to succeed as a winner in the june 2022 examination or the december 2022 examination all the students who have just joined the um uh, just join this particular live session please hit a like button we have already reached 81 we have already reached 81 the target is to reach 100 okay we have already already reached 81 so yes sir that's all for this particular session guys that's all for um the rules and yes in the next class i will show you the next rule which is the difficult rule which is the king of the rules which is the rule that will give us monopoly that will give the cost accountants a monopoly that will give the cmas the monopoly to rule the world to get cost audit done um for all the companies um uh, who, are, who are falling under this category of cost audit this is the next um uh, rule this is the um uh, you know the cult rule or the king rule which we are going to study in our next class which is rule number 4 and yes i am going to share all these notes all these slide decks with you in the whatsapp group the whatsapp group is prepared on this mobile number so guys just join this mobile just join this uh, uh, whatsapp group on this mobile number 9643929913 just join the whatsapp group and you will be privy to many more goodies many more benefits with respect to cost audit and bvm spm um uh, uh, for your further reference in your examination also it will be very very useful to all of you and yes such sessions will be conducted for bvm spm also very very soon paper number 20 so stay tuned and today evening we are meeting again face to face on google meet i want to see all of you i want to communicate with all of you this is a one way communication in the evening we'll have two way communication where you will also be chatting with me you can also um uh, you know interact with me you can also speak over here you cannot speak you can just um uh, send messages but in the evening you will definitely uh, be able to speak so in the evening we'll meet in 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 the google meet for the test which chapter test test of companies cost records and audit rules 2014 the entire rules will be uh, taken up for test not only the portion which i have covered the portion which i have not covered that will also be taken um, as the test so let's meet in the evening 7 pm until that time all the very best and happy studying bye bye see you in the next session and see you in the evening thank you so much oh wow we have reached 92 likes we have reached 92 likes guys brilliant we have reached 92 likes brilliant ditay says thanks for your love and care oh yes always always love from mumbai love coming in for from mumbai okay great great brilliant i just love interacting with you guys and that too on a live platform love from ahmednagar ahm ahmednagar okay ahmednagar all right please tell me which states are you from please type your states in the chat box i want to know which states are you from which states of the country and if anyone is from outside country from dubai or any other part of the world then it will be um uh, all the more exciting you know which country are you, which state nashik nashik okay aniket bindra says nashik lavanya says chennai avneet kaur says delhi jaipur rajasthan gitika deepti karnataka nikhil ahmednagar sneha delhi utkala hyderabad venu gopal kamath bangalore bro code mumbai ditya tamil nadu navi mumbai krishna love from odisha vinita agar vinita agarwal rishita madhya pradesh chennai renuka aisha odisha gomati tamil nadu सुमंत महाराष्ट्र सत्यवान पुणे उत्कला तेलंगाना श्रीजा हैदराबाद बी फोकस हरियाणा कृष्णा उड़ीसा जिया जीशा वर्गीस केरला ब्रिलियंट गाइस ब्रिलियंट सो ऑलमोस्ट ऑलमोस्ट द एंटायर कंट्री कमिंग ऑन वन प्लेटफॉर्म टू रियलाइज वन कॉमन गोल ऑल राइट 96 इज द लाइक 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 नंबर इज 96 नाउ फोर मोर टू गो फोर मोर टू गो 96 इज द नंबर दैट इज ब्रिलियंट ऑल राइट गाइस सो इट्स रियली गुड टू सी ऑल Uh, the entire country coming up for one mission, and the mission is very, very clear. June 2022 examination. We need to complete our Group Four um, uh, syllabus, and we need to come out as a winner, as a CMA in June 2022 examination or December 2022 examination, as the case may be. So yes, in your pursuit, I am wholeheartedly there to support you, to extend my wholehearted um, love and care for you. So yes, all the very best and happy studying. Bye bye. Bye. See you again.